There are introverts everywhere, even among highly influential executives. No matter the place and time, be it a classroom or a party, it seems there are more extroverts than introverts. Don't be deceived, these quiet people are evenly distributed among us, they are found in all walks of life. The two personality types introvert and extrovert were introduced by the psychologist C.G. Jung. Introverts are people who often withdraw inward and focus on their thoughts. On the other hand, extroverts are socially active and actively interact with their external environment. The two personality types also differ in how they recharge their batteries. Introverts recover through quiet, solitary contemplation while extroverts recover through social interaction. Finally, they communicate differently. Introverts are reserved. They prefer to listen and take time to ponder on all options before taking action, whereas extroverts are decisive and outspoken. So how many introverted people are out there? According to a study, which involved interviewing many groups of people about introverted traits, such as preferring to listen instead of talking, and needing lots of quiet time. The result shows 47 to 55 percent of the American populace are introverts. But are they in business and politics? As much as modern business culture favors extroverts because of the emphasis on socializing, decisiveness and gregariousness overt traits such as conscientiousness, or reflectiveness, which are introvert traits. They still form about 40% of executives, according to a study. In fact, President Abraham Lincoln was an introvert, often withdrawing to himself reading law books in his library rather than socializing. Introverts may miss opportunities because they do not hog the limelight. Imagine a strategy meeting where employees are struggling to have their thoughts heard on a marketing problem. Everyone is looking to attract the limited attention of the boss. This is an area an introvert will lose out. And this is why. If you don't speak out at the strategy meeting, your ideas will not be heard. The loud and outspoken employees often get the most desirable assignments with funds to boot. For example, as an introvert, you may have a great solution to the marketing ailment the business is having, but hesitate to enter the frail. Therefore, your idea will not be heard, as it won't speak for itself. To help your team in this instance, you need to speak up and convince everyone. Introverts do not only miss out in meetings like this, keeping a low profile at work might result in being overlooked by the boss when he delegates duties. And this happens because your boss might not have ample time to search for a capable hand to execute the project, therefore he readily goes for another employee who has recently made a favorable impression. For instance, a performing extrovert is likely to get a promotion over an equally performing introvert because the extroverts draw more attention to his performance. So, if you want to be in charge, get promotions and be rewarded for your performance you need to stay on your boss's radar, ensure he notes your accomplishments. When next you see your boss, give him a gentle reminder of your performance. An introvert's alone time can be a disadvantage. If you have worked in an office, you will realize there are times when people prefer to work alone. An introvert likes to work alone most of the time, which can work to their disadvantage. Introverts perform better when they work alone, but at times it takes diplomatic skill and effort to explain this preference. This is so because a business setting is extrovert-friendly, with open offices, meetings and a place where teamwork is emphasized. This setting, therefore, does not provide enough time for an introvert to recharge. Also, extroverted colleagues might not understand an introvert's need to work alone. They may feel rejected, which will negatively affect team bonding. An introvert is also reluctant to participate in informal socializing in meetings and conferences. A trait which can work against them, as these moments are used to exchange information, strengthen connections, and make deals. For instance, an introverted executive who rather than golf with the other executives spends time alone. Only to find out at the official meeting that vital deals have already been made on the green. Introverts should, therefore, spend more time socializing. The problem is, an introvert is not wired to go long spells without alone time. As this can affect morale and performance. This is so because introverts work best when they have solitude to recharge their batteries. If they are continually deprived of this alone time, they will become exhausted, hence, less productive. Also, they may develop stress-related symptoms such as headaches and back problems. An introvert who does not have an alone time will be unhappy as an extrovert who has been confined to work alone. You should carefully plan your day if you are an introvert. Introverts are often misunderstood. Imagine you work in an open office, extroverted workplace as an introvert. 
You get assigned a task, which naturally you retreat to your workspace to find the alone time to concentrate and provide the best possible solution. Two weeks on, a staff evaluation criticizes you as slow and acting aloof. This misconception is common for introverts. They are often seen as slow thinkers because of their tendency to carefully consider options before proffering a solution, answer. On the other hand, extroverts give swift contributions as it comes to their mind. The comparison of these styles often leads people to believe introverts are slow thinkers. For instance, mentally create a picture of two bright kids in school, one an introvert, the other an extrovert. During a science fair, the extroverts contribute swiftly, while an introvert takes time to double-check the validity of her ideas before making a contribution. If both kids are compared, the introvert will be seen as more intelligent. Also, introverts are also seen as cold, aloof, or scheming, as they focus on their feelings and are less expressive. If you suffer a loss, for instance, they might appear very quiet as they empathize with your grief and look aloof outwardly. This may stir two things in the mind of an extrovert, the introvert is insensitive, or he dislikes his co-workers and doesn't share his feelings with them. This may paint the introverted person as cold-hearted or a disconnected individual from the team, this can negatively impact team bonding. Have you noticed a colleague who takes time to speak? Don't judge her, she might be an introvert. Carefully choosing words is one of an introvert's critical assets. Do you take time to speak? Do you take a moment to weigh the pros and cons of your statement? If you answer yes to both, you may be introverted. While your colleagues may not understand why you take a moment to articulate your thought, it is to your advantage. This is why. Not being swift to speak can save you from making a costly mistake. And in some work environments, a wrong word can cost you your job. If for instance, you are a spokesman, a diplomat or a politician, you can't blurt out a comment about the first lady's funny hat. If you take ample time to think before speaking, leading to articulate well-founded words, your statement will gain extra consideration from people. By taking the time to gather your thoughts before sharing them, you will improve the quality of your statements. Imagine presenting a statement backed with relevant data, presented articulately to a panel. This will make you appear competent, worth listening to compared to another who shares nothing of substance. Also, if people know you are a disciplined speaker, you will readily gain access to privileged information. They expect their secrets to be saved with you, thereby allowing you access to privileged information. If your boss, for instance, confides in you that he has secretly applied for a job opening in another company. If you have ambitions to occupy your boss's position, this information could help you distinguish yourself from your colleagues. The next piece teaches how introverts can improve their leadership skills. The ability to listen and observe makes introverts excellent leaders. To further explore the mind of an introvert, let's consider a quiet four-year-old girl called Ruth. She seldom plays with her peers, but pays rapt attention to their activities, thereby knowing the specific actions each love to indulge in. Most introverts are like Judy, they are excellent observers. And this is because they do not participate in games, discussions, chit-chat and banter, but remain in the periphery of all activities, observing interactions. Ruth, for instance, may be reluctant to play tag, but while her peers are scheming ways to escape, she closely monitors everyone's action, learning who chuckles when about to be caught, and those who cooperate to divert the attention of the chaser. The ability to observe and pay rapt attention makes introverts great listeners. During a discussion, the focus on the ideas you are trying to pass across. They are less prone to distraction like the extroverts and do not come up with fast, witty replies. Introverts make great listeners. If you have a pair of twins, one an introvert, and the other an extrovert, by the age of eight, you will clearly observe the introvert is better at listening than his brother. Why is this skill important? Listening and observational skills are the hallmarks of a good leader. Through observing and listening, a leader is able to come up with the right motivation to keep the performance of his team up. Furthermore, good listening skill is essential to building relationships with customers and rapport with superiors. Networking is often seen as an exclusively extroverted chore, but there's an introverted way of doing it. For a leader to be successful, he needs to build and nurture relationships. Well, does this mean introverts have to be bored to death in a team meeting on workdays while spending the evenings collecting business cards? Introverts do not like traditional networking, unlike the extroverts who enjoy different types of conversation. They cannot stand small talks which is a characteristic of such events. 
There are other ways introverts can network, networking websites, as they prefer communicating through writing, it is a great way to express their thoughts through writing. Many introverts are proficient writers, and they make excellent first impressions via messaging and emails. On such websites, an introvert can revise messages and edit if need be before contributing to a discussion. Furthermore, an introvert can also communicate in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. This allows for an in-depth conversation and better adapt to the other person's need. This is an avenue to discover what the other person likes, and whether they prefer hands-on or an abstract approach to solving tasks. One-on-one -on -one conversation helps people share intimate information, which is useful to a leader. Measured, deep, one-on-one -on -one conversations play to an introverted leader's strengths. Conclusively, introverts also connect with others who keep silent in team meetings, maybe because they appear more approachable than others in that setting. We live in an extroverted business world. Introverts need to push the limits of their boundaries to succeed. Think about a world where offices will be extinct, and everyone works from home maybe in a hundred years from now. This will be the era of the introverts. Till then, you as an introvert have to push the limit of your boundaries and adapt to this present extroverted world. Because if you decide not to venture out of your comfort zone, you will not interact, communicate and network enough with others who might add value to your life. Your disinterest for limelight can make you avoid public speaking. You might also not look forward to unofficial get-togethers with colleagues, but instead spend time in solitude recharging. And finally, when you need to pass urgent messages, you might prefer sending an email rather than calling. But by adapting to this extroverted world, you will overcome fear and discomfort, which is vital to becoming a great leader. As a leader, you will be saddled with motivating your team, representing your company and publicly presenting the values it represents. All these tasks involve public speaking. Furthermore, unofficial get-togethers provide avenues to form professional alliances, learn and build networks. Conclusively, sending emails is an ineffective way of communicating. Mail takes time to be opened and can be missed altogether. Preparation and practice will help advance an introverted leader's career. Introverts do not like small talks, they at times think they lack the genes for it. Well, this is not true, we all have the same set of genes, and small talk can be learned. Small talk is not appealing to introverts, and most time they shun it, making them appear rude, incompetent or unfriendly, which can negatively impact their careers. Small talk can be learned, and if introverts learn this art, they will confidently engage in one without trying to avoid it. They could look to incorporate generic, open-ended questions or backup topics when needed. Preparing for small talk can help speed up introvert response time, and this will significantly reduce the risk of being seen as intellectually deficient. Introverts take time to work out well-founded answers, but the ability to anticipate and prepare for such questions can help speed up response time. An introvert will benefit from preparation and regularly practicing public speaking and small talk, two vital elements of being a good leader. Practice, just like preparation, will address many challenges an introverted leader is likely to face. You may lack public speaking practice because you regularly shy away from public speaking to escape the limelight. Or you avoid small talk because you prefer an in-depth discussion. Practice makes perfect, practice these essential elements, and you will become good at it. Additionally, practice will fine-tune your communication skill set, like the ability to raise your voice when needed, or whisper as the case may be, during a public speech or meeting. This will come in handy when you occupy a position with little or no time for preparation where presentations are done ad lib. Conclusion It is challenging for an introvert to occupy a leadership position, but it's not all gloom. There are techniques to overcome this challenge such as sharpening your observational and listening skills while not forgetting to always choose your words carefully before speaking. With this, you will be on the way to become a great leader. Conclusion Being an introvert should not stop you from being an exceptional leader. Some of the world's greatest leaders are introverts. By pushing yourself to acquire skills that help you leverage your uniqueness for greatness, you can achieve phenomenal results that will be of benefit to your personal and professional life. Do you ever feel like extroverts get everything they ask for while your needs are passed over or ignored? Next time this happens, try to get into the act of a popular actor or actress and speak up.